What do you dislike about Imperial? You? <laughs> Hey everyone, my name's Dev and I'm a fourth year medical student at Imperial College London. Welcome to my channel. I make videos about student lifestyle, medicine, Imperial and tech. And so if any of that interests you, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. In another one of my deep thinking shower sessions, I've realised that I haven't made an Imperial video in a very long time. Imperial is this amazing university that sometimes gets a bad rep. And in my previous videos, I've worked really hard to tell you guys that it's not really like that. But, like all universities, Imperial does have a few things that could be improved upon. So I got thinking and I thought, why not use this platform to raise awareness for some of the issues that Imperial faces, and maybe one day we can make a change. So I decided to do an Instagram poll, and I got some feedback from some of the students of Imperial, and then I thought about some of the things that I personally dislike about Imperial, combined them all together, did a little milshmash, milshmash, a <laughs> ton German there. Mix them all up, and here we are, boom, this is the video, I hope you guys do enjoy. Imperial has multiple campuses located in central London and west London, but its main campus is in South Kensington, right next to the Royal Bull Hall. The South Kensington area and the Knightsbridge area have been consistently ranked as some of the most expensive places to live in the entire country, and Imperial being situated right in the centre of it really doesn't help things. Yes, Imperial does provide one of the most generous bursary schemes in the entire country. Yes, uh, Imperial accommodation in the South Kensington area is really good value for money compared to its surrounding. And yes, Imperial does provide a little student discount to its cafes. Objectively speaking, it's still very expensive. Imperial does have many cafes on its campus, but the variety isn't too great and a lot of the people don't really like its food. And so if you decide to not get food from the Imperial Cafe, where do you go? South Kensington Station, High Street Ken, Harrods, all very expensive places to get food for students. This takes me on to my second point. Imperial is located in a wonderful location, in a culturally rich, diverse area with a lot of history, a lot of parks, museums, cafes, and a lot to do and explore. But this does come with a few downsides. Being located in central London means that there isn't really a lot of space available and the campus size of Imperial I feel like it's relatively small compared to what I feel like other universities are. And I get that this can't be changed and that's probably why Imperial is constantly branching out and they're developing their new um, campus in White City which is looking to me absolutely top notch by the way. Comparatively the South Kensington campus is a little bit a little bit not as good looking. Having a relatively small campus does bring about quite a few issues. For example, objectively speaking, the library is great, you know, it has five floors, um, it's constantly renovated, it's quite modern, has a lot of facilities, but the thing is, Imperial has a lot of students, and the library just simply isn't big enough. The library is constantly jam-packed, and it's especially difficult during exam season to find a spot, and you couple that with the fact that a lot of students just leave their stuff there and then dip to the cafe and occupy the space, you can't get a spot. Furthermore, there aren't a lot of communal areas where you can socialise. You do have the union bar in Byte, the junior and senior common rooms, but then again they're constantly bombarded with students and it's just not big enough. And there needs to be more places and also maybe a bit more entertainment like a pool table that I can use to flex on people with. Imperial South Kensington campus has three accommodation halls, Byte, Southside and Eastside, and all in all they hold about 1,000 students. Other students live in clusters in North Acton, Paddington and Waterloo. So right from the get-go, in year one, the freshers are dispersed and can't really have one big community. Because of the high cost of living, a lot of students actually move out of South Kensington and move to places like Hammersmith, Fulham and Earls Court, simply because they're cheaper. This can be good in the sense that a lot of students who were dispersed in year one can move closer to each other. And seeing as places like Hammersmith and Fulham are closer to the South Kensington campus, people who are living in North Acton actually move closer to university. But it does mean that in general, most people, pretty much all people, would have to commute into university, whether that's a 15 minute walk or a half an hour bus ride. Now this could be a thing in other universities as well, but I just thought that this is a thing that you guys should take note of. This may not be a bad thing for medics though, because our main campus is the Charing Cross campus, which is located in Hammersmith, so this is kind of ideal. So in year one, I lived in Byte, which was across the road. And then in year two and year three, I lived across the road to Charing Cross Hospital, which again was ideal. So I guess you, you win some and you you win some. Because the number of medics at Imperial is so fat, it's like 350 students and it's only looking to get higher and higher, there seems to be a large segregation between medics and non-medics because we can form our own community. And a lot of my friends from year one who were non-medics, I just, I just haven't seen them in years. And it's the same for a lot of my friends, they say the same thing about their friends. 
Medics have their own clubs, societies, events, gatherings, and their own campuses where the hospitals are located. And we don't actually see non-medics unless we actively try and see them. We don't bump into them at all, unless you go to the South Kensington campus, which apart from year one, isn't a lot. And so the only place you can meet non-medics is clubs and societies. Although a good thing is in Medics Badminton, I noticed that a lot of students were actually non-medics, which is pretty cool. We had non-medics on the committee, which um, I don't think we've had before. So that was whew, pretty, pretty cool. Nice. Go, go badminton. By the way, if you guys are enjoying the video so far, then make sure you drop a like down below to show your support. It really helps the channel out and pushes this video to, to a lot of people. And if you guys have noticed, I've been monetized, which is mad. And like, I got approved in 12, 12 hours, which is insane. Like, I don't even know it could be approved that quick. Normally it says it takes up to a month. But anyways, uh, moving moving on from that. The next point is very obvious and it's literally plastered everywhere. You hear about all the time. It even came up in my polls on Instagram and that is the male to female ratio. And yeah guys, it's not the best, you know, but it is getting better. There are subjects where it's predominantly female like biology and there are subjects which is 50-50 like medicine and you go all the way to engineering which is predominantly male. But if I look at the stats, you know, things are getting better. From 2013 to 2018, the percentage of females increased by about 23.7% and males increased by about 10.9%. So the proportion of females is growing, but obviously this takes time and you know it's getting better. And a big part of that is the students not being put off by this ratio and therefore not applying to Imperial. And if they do that, then it's just gonna not go and it's gonna like stagnate or go even worse than it is because people are just put off by it. So that's something you guys as students can do. And that is not um, look to apply to Imperial simply uh, because of you know the male to female ratio and that is not ideal for you guys like you will find your women you know objectively speaking there are a lot of women um, it's just in proportion to males yeah it's it's less but still there there are loads of women you'll you'll find your women guys what can i say <laughs> so don't don't make that the deciding factor you know um between you know going to imperial or not so finally, my little section about things that I couldn't include in the main list, but a lot of students had said in my Instagram poll. So I thought I'd make a little section and include them here. So the first thing is the international student fee. And yes, I looked at it and it is too goddamn high, uh, as Glossy Carter would say. But yeah, it's incredibly high. Like for example, medicine costs about 45,000 per year for international students. And my entire degree as a home student is 54,000-ish, or 54,500, something like that. Either way, 55 compared to 45 and that's one year to six years like it is huge and to be honest with you guys like after brexit it's not getting better like it's just gonna better it's just gonna get worse and worse uh, so all i can say is may may imperial have mercy on the international students a few people also said that there's too many goals and not enough lols and to be honest i had absolutely no idea what this meant i had to I had to message them to clarify what this means and basically goals means guided online learning and lols is live online learning and there's apparently too much goals um, and basically goals is like pre-recorded stuff so it isn't very interactive so imperial all i can say is um lol more someone also said that booking a room in imperial is quite difficult especially for club societies and you know dance events and all that stuff and to be honest i can 100 percent agree with this i took part in this thing called east meets west uh, which is one of the biggest student run shows or something like that it's a big um, Indian event. My point is we were jumping around from room to room and we just always like rehearsing from here and then it was just a big big hassle. So Imperial, I don't know whose fault this was, if it was students or Imperial, but it definitely needs to make its booking system easier and I guess once again it links into the whole being a small campus and not having enough huge rooms that um, a lot of societies can rent out to um, or book out even to do their stuff. That's been it for the video. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did make sure you drop a like down below. I've been Devify and I'm out.